Well, we're recording. This is June 18th, 2011. My name's Bob Brockway. You may be familiar with some of my other videos. This is a electrostatic motor. I wanted to uh, there are some still shots in a slideshow I did earlier. It's just made out of old CD discs and a, the chamber is from uh, when you purchase the CDs. This is the rotor. Kind of over oiled it so I got to going to dry it up. As you can see, it's just the center pin, which is the axle. This is like a spinning top. I originally got the idea from R.A. Ford and his jumping top. I couldn't duplicate his, so I read about everything he had to do and went on my own. And came up with this. Now, as you can see, it turns pretty free by itself, and it has a wobble to it. It's not perfect because I didn't have a lathe or anything to line it up with. I just did the best I could. It actually came out better than I probably should have deserved. But we're going to run it with a Wimhurst. Now, this is <clears throat> this is the actual rotor right here. The plastic part. The top disc, which is also a plastic disc, but it has an aluminum plate on top of that, which is slightly undersized. There's a reason for that. It's to prevent arc over, so it doesn't spark over. And, and the reason I put in the second disc with the pl aluminum plate, it's a damper. These things want to these things will wobble on you. And A.R. Ford even mentioned that. And he he found a way to dampen it by using a stationary dampener underneath. I tried that and it didn't work for me. And I gave it a lot of thought and I came up with this one. It rotates with it and it seems to achieve the same thing. So we're going to stop it. This thing will rotate almost five minutes if just by spinning it by your hand. That's how easy it turns. And uh, the reason I like to run it with a lid on it or the cap is because this thing throws out a lot of ion and uh, I don't really feel like getting charged up. Now over on the other, the, you'll see there's three leads. We got a, this is positive, this is negative on this side. Third lead goes to the axle part of it because I found out that the axle for some reason charges up and it seems kind of strange but it, it appears in most cases when I've tested it it's been positive. I don't remember it ever being negative actually and uh, you'll see the leaf move just a little bit. It isn't a strong, strong charge, but there is a charge there. And what's fascinating is why it charges at all, because one... I'll take this back apart, because I didn't show you the... We have... This This would be, in this case now, this will be the positive electrode, and that will be the negative. And they're not right across from each other. There, uh, there's a, there's a 30 degree. The negative one is 30 degrees closer. To, uh, I, I got that from recommendations from A. R. Ford's work, and never having this was my first one. Never having built one, I followed uh, what he said pretty close. Just so I was had a better chance of it working, 
but that's and now these are pointed electrodes as you can see they're just it's an aluminum rod and it's bent over and drawn to a point and I've got them in about uh, about uh, three sixteenths of an inch in from the edge okay I'm going to uh, I, don't, I hope the camera's picking that up. It starts slowly. They are self-starting, by the way, uh, most of 99% of the time. Now we're running about, uh, well, it's, humidity's been dropping all day. We're pretty good. We're about 54% uh, humidity, which is really good. And uh, you don't need to, well, but I don't know if you can see that the leaf in the electroscope is already it has a separation in it, so you can see it's taking off the charge. Now, this probably won't reach 2700 RPM, but it'll probably reach easily between 23 and 25, even today. Now, you won't see any visuals uh, ions moving from the electrode to the uh, rotator. To the rotor, not in daylight. It's too much daylight. I hope there's too much daylight because I, I really want to pick it up tonight. I hope I got enough light. We're gonna try it. And uh, but this was my very first. This was my first successful one. Let me put it that way. That's a better way of putting it. And I, and I did a lot of uh, changes. And it's still basically a top. And it just sits on the uh, the axle, which is pointed at one end, with a with a very uh, with an adjustable rest on the very tip. And then I have a bearing in the bottom of the hubs that rides real tight on the shaft, and, and it makes it pretty stable. And uh, it'll go as long as you crank it. The, the uh, Electrostatic motors really have no practical function outside. It's fun to build. They're relatively simple, and they uh, 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 well, that's about it. They could possibly be used for some type of switching, like a photo switch or a read switch or a proximity switch, where because uh, they have no torque. Now you can get them going. A.R. Ford in his work with him, he got him well over 3,000 RPM. I've never been able to achieve that, but I didn't build mine to the quite probably, more than likely not the quality he had either. But uh, there you have it. And uh, now it'll, like I said, even at this speed, it'll probably spin for almost 10 minutes if you if you just start cranking the the generator but you can see there's some natural wobble to it but the thing you the actual rotor itself which is which is actually you can see is the black line here it's pretty stable and that's really what I go by not not the top part so much and uh, I had a um, tachometer uh, that's why it's got a reflective tape on the on the hub and I, I, will, I borrowed it from where I worked before I retired, and uh, that's how I got my RPM readings. And uh, I uh, was able to, to get it to register it at 2700. Now this is, uh, there again we have, this is a positive charge electrode. This is the negative one on this side. Now you can see the separation is still continuing in the electroscope. Now that's coming off the axle, which is electrically is not electrically connected to anything, except that it's in the system. In fact, it's got a good dielectric around it, even though the axle is metal, and the hub itself is actually aluminum, with a brass bushing at the bottom and a steel set screw at the top for my top bearing. And but there is a nylon sleeve, and of course all the discs are plastic. And the other on the other metal part is my dampener, this this aluminum, and it uh, but it still charges up the axle. 
which I thought thought was kind of interesting. Seems how you have both charges. Where where's the positive charge and why is it positive? And uh, but but it is, and uh, that's the way it works. If a person could study this and have a lot of fun. Uh, anyways, that's the uh, whoop. That's the name of that game. Now I'm going to take a video of the other one. I have to do a minor repair to it. Now it has different uh, electrodes in it, but it works just as good. Oh, by the way, both these turn the same RPM whether I use the Van de Graaff generator, which is a two thousand, which is a two hundred kV unit. Now this is only capable. The Windhorse is only a seventy kV. Now, you say well, wouldn't the higher potential it would turn faster? Uh, yes, it would, but you have to remember one thing: on the Van de Graaff belt, you're only getting a positive charge. The other electrode is actually going through the base of the Van de Graaff into ground. Now, it may be slightly negative, but it's it, and there, but and then. You're only getting one charge out the Van de Graaff. You're getting two charges out of this. You're getting a, you're getting a charge out the negative, and you're getting a charge out the positive. So they kind of equal each other out, even though one has a lot less potential than the other. And it seems to be able to do the same amount of work in respect to the RPM. Well, I'm going to uh, conclude that. You can build them a lot simpler than this, but if I happen to have CDs where a lot real available to me uh, and I decided to make that out of that and the nice thing about the cover is that you don't get sprayed with the ions because they come swinging off that rotor pretty good and secondly that uh, keeps it clean keeps the dust off which I like that too now there is a hole in the chamber the cover right in the very center uh, that's that has two purposes it just lets the air circulate because it's not sealed that tight. And secondly, if it's sometimes it doesn't want to start, uh, it, uh, depending on the humidity. And I I could just reach in there with a straw and rotate it. So it worked out for me. Now you can't. Uh, well, that's about it. And it, it. Like I said, it'll coast for quite a while. Now, that's fairly stable. The, the, uh, I hope you can see that in the video. I'm going to play that back before I put it on the, put it out on my channel, but see if you can. I, I certainly hope so. Well, uh, I'll see what happens. Talk to you later.